Welcome to the first video of a new series. We're gonna do Adobe Photoshop 101. So in this video, we're gonna learn the basics and you'll pretty much know everything to get started without the intimidation factor. So I'm not gonna dive extremely deep into it, but I'm gonna let you know of everything you need to know so that you can get started today. What exactly allows me the ability to be able to teach this? For one, I have my graphic design degree. Two, I've been doing this since 2003. And number three, I made millions of dollars selling graphic designs. And I know that may be hard to believe, but you can fact check me, check the YouTube channel out and you'll soon understand. So let's go ahead and hop straight into it. So we're not gonna go over the whole on suite. Honestly, that would take forever and you'll probably get tired of it and you probably don't wanna get a jump start. Some of the things that you'll learn in this video is what is Photoshop, setting up the project file, using the pen tool, using the brushes, how to cut, copy, and paste, understanding layers, opacity, and the history. And honestly, I think that's more than enough for you to get started. All right, so here we are setting up our project. Obviously, it depends on what we are creating for our end goal. So when it comes to Photoshop, you really need to know what your end project file already is because this is a raster based program. So Adobe Illustrator, which you may have already seen, is going to be for vector based projects. So this is pretty much better for things like logos because this is based off of paths, as you can see right here. A raster is based off of pixels, which is practically images, pretty much like what you're seeing right now. You have an in pixel amount, like it's not something you can scale indefinitely without loss of resolution. So here you will put in the inches that you want. So for example, if you're creating a t-shirt, maybe you want it to be 12 by 16 inches at 300 dpi and dpi stands for dots per inch so that just really explains the resolution of the actual image the two main dpis that you need to know is 72 dpi is for what you see on the web and on an image that is going to be shared online 300 dpi is typically used for prints for something in the outside world outside of your computer so for example it could be a t-shirt print a poster print a canvas print so in those aspects you probably want to use 300 dpi all right so now it probably already looks a little overwhelming. I don't like all the additional stuff because it is overwhelming. So most of the things that I use is going to be the toolbox right here on the left side. Then you have the history and then you have the characters for your text and then you have your layers right here. So when it comes to setting up your workspace, you will click on window and then you will see all of these additional items that you can click on and it's always going to be something else that's different. So it can get really intense, but that's where it becomes really overwhelming. So for myself, I like layers, history, and the actual character box. So the first thing I said we we're going to learn today is the pen tool, which is going to be this one right here. And all you have to do is click the letter P to be able to access this. Eventually over time, these shortcuts on your keyboard is going to become super, super powerful. So go ahead and start practicing that as soon as you hop on the Photoshop. I click the letter P to be able to access this tool. Now some other things to keep in mind is going to be holding the space bar to drag your entire artboard around. I will hope you have a mouse that can scroll up and down because you can hold the alt button or if you're on the Mac, I believe it's command and this will allow you to zoom in and out and if you hold the other side control you'll be able to go left and right so it's going to be powerful for you to be constantly doing this while you're working on a project now the power of the pen tool is the fact that you can create shapes with it or you can cut something out but it's not always just pinpoints like that you can always click and drag and as you can see you have nice powerful curves as well so let me go ahead and show you the power of that with the n8 image so all i did was paste this image on over right here this is actually my personal car which is kind of crazy because when i got in photoshop i got into it because i wanted to Photoshop cars and make them look different. And a car like this was to me pretty much just a dream at the time. So as you can see, I have the pen tool open right now. And let's say for example, I just only wanna cut this headlight out. So the pen tool is a lot more accurate when it comes to tracing and you have to really practice this tool so that you can actually get used to it. So as you can see, I'm cutting this headlight out. I'm gonna right click and click make selection. And as you can see, you have a feather radius that pretty much just defines the edge of the actual cut. So if you had zero, it's a super sharp cut. The higher you go, it's going to be more of a blur on the actual cut. So I like to put mine at 0.1 so it's not super sharp and it's not extremely blurred. So now I have that selected right there. I can click copy and I can click paste and check it out. I just have the headlight. So now as earlier, I mentioned this whole entire history right here. So control Z is cool, but sometimes it, depending on how fast your computer is, it might not go all the way back to the very beginning. With the history, you can actually go back to whenever you selected on a certain item or you did an actual action. So when I pasted the image right here, I can go back to right before it, or I can even just go to when I started creating the actual pen tool. I can go to whenever I created the selection change. I can even go back a step right before it. So I really like the history box because I make a lot of mistakes because I'm human. So I click on it a lot. So let me just go ahead and show you the feather. Once again, I'm going to right click, click make selection and watch this right now. I'm going to click five pixels. Now I'm going to copy and paste. And as you can see, now you have that blur right there. As you can see where I was talking about, it's not going to be as much of a fine cut. So the next thing we're going to talk about is the brush tool. And as you can see, now we have the brush tool because 
because you know obviously you'll probably want to color something eventually but what's important to know about it is the fact that you have different brush types different types of brushes different sharpnesses different sizes so what you can do is right click you can change the size right here or you can right click and change the hardness as you can see previously just like how we had the feathered edge the same thing happens right here on the hardness so let's say we go on over to 42 percent and let's say we go on over to zero percent see the difference now here's another thing to know there's different brushes and you can even download and install different brush types so as you can see this one right here has a little bit more of a texture to it let's increase the size it's kind of more of like a grunge splatter there's multiple different types of brushes that you'll be able to download on the internet some that you can purchase and sometimes there's already some good ones that's already installed with photoshop so those are brushes right there now what we're going to talk about that we have not talked about is the layers window right here layers in my opinion is probably the most important thing when it comes to creating digital art because you pretty much have the ability to mesh multiple arts onto one artboard and i think that's the true power of having a photo design editor so for example if i want to type in a text oh first of all i hit the <laughs> letter control t and i open up the text window and i just clicked on it and that allowed me to create that text so there's two different ways to create a text you can click on it and that doesn't necessarily create a text box but if you just click and you drag then you are creating a text box so the text does not leave that text box so that's kind of more powerful when you are creating like a flyer or a cd cover or a poster design something like that because you don't want it to go beyond certain points but this right here also works at the end of the day it kind of becomes a preference one thing you will learn about Adobe Photoshop and Illustrator there's a hundred ways to do the same thing multiple different artists will have different ways to come up with the same end project but they created it different ways so there's multiple ways to get the same results doing different things all right so here I am back on the layer box right so as you can see I can pretty much reorganize it so let me go ahead and change the color of this real quick so here I am right here I clicked on this layer right here so that's my black one right and as you can see it's behind the AU but I can drag this layer layer on top of this one and now check it out it's in front of that one so that's the power of layers sometimes you can drag the whole entire image now it's behind this whole entire image so that's why you need to know more about layers and now one thing i didn't mention that we do need to know about is the move tool right here so this shortcut right here is v and the reason why we need to know about that is because sometimes we want to move this actual item around right so one other thing you might want to know about that is the fact that if you have this layer selected and you'll only be moving this right here but for some reason you have a hundred thousand layers going on you can't find out how to move this right here this little button right here is truly important and it took me a few years when i first started to know about this button it says auto select so although i am on the current layer of this black one right here now if i have the auto select checked it will change the layer because it obviously sees i'm trying to click on this one right here now let's get to some more fun stuff so we can delete both of these and let's go ahead and talk about copy and paste so for example i started getting into Photoshop because I wanted to Photoshop cars. Let me go ahead and copy this image over. I'm going to paste it, right? And so now I want to cut this out and there's multiple ways to be able to do this. Just like I said, so we can click on this right here, which is the marquee. We have the elliptical one. We have the rectangular one. We can just go ahead and do something like that. And you can hold the shift button. So that's a perfect circle. If you let go of the shift button, it's going to be like an oval and you kind of have free range to be able to do what you want. Holding shift just allows you to make that perfect circle, right? So I could do something like this and I can copy it and I can paste it and then now I can come back onto my layers and now you can see the wheels cut out right there but for this instance you might want it to be a little bit more feathered right so you would go on over to the top we'll click 0.5 and then now you'll copy it and paste it. And then now we won't have that clean edge anymore. But in this example right here, since it is a will and we want it to not necessarily look horrible, we want it to kind of merge into the original will, if that makes sense. We can change the feather like we did earlier and that way it won't be an extremely perfect cut. But like I said, there's a thousand ways to do something. You can also use the pen tool to be able to cut out the will, right? So there's a hundred ways to be able to do something. I said thousand and I said hundred. So I'm gonna copy and paste this. And now I have this over over here and what I'm gonna do is click control T to do the transform transform is important as well because obviously you're gonna want to be able to change sizes or you can just click on edit and then you can click on pre transform right here which is control T and remember you guys I told you guys shortcuts are important if you guys forget what shortcuts are you can look around and you'll be able to find shortcuts like right here where it says the actual name of it so to be able to do a fill it will be shift f5 so I have this right here I'm just gonna resize it to what I think looks pretty good and it looks decent but 
not the best. Now, what we can do to get a more accurate measurement is we can play with the opacity right here. So once you play with this, you can actually see through it. And now you can see exactly where you kind of want to line it up. And maybe you want to resize it a little bit more. And then you can move the opacity all the way back up. And then you'll have a better look at everything. And as you can see, the wheels don't actually look pretty good. You can see that cut right there. And then you can see the original tires. So what you can do instead of using the brush, you can use the eraser. And it's literally the same thing as the brush. But this time you're going to be erasing. So we're going to move the size down. Move the hardness all the way down below. Because you want it to be, you know, kind of a rough erase. You don't want that smooth erase. So that you can kind of blend it in, right? So for example, if I'm going to use the hardness all the way up. You see the difference right there? In that aspect, you probably just want to cut out the rim. And then put it inside the other tire. But in my experience, I kind of notice a better merge. When it comes to just kind of brushing in off the tire. All right. So you can pretty much just play around with that. Until you get something that you like. I'm not going to go too deep into that. Just to be real quick, you can just also do this right here. And as you can see, the rear wheel is a little bit larger, so you have to free transform it. How did I copy and paste that so easily? All I did was hold the Alt button. And that allows me to drag a copy of that layer on over. Okay. So then you could resize it if you wanted to. And as you can see, this right here needs some erasing as well. Not going to mess with that. Just going to pretty much show you guys what you can do. Now, since we're talking about the pen tool and the opacity, now we learn two different things where we can actually create something, right? So we have the pen tool. I'm going to click on new layer and check it out. I have the window over here. Now this is where we put our skills to the test. Now I'm going to pretty much select this window, right? I'm pretty much using the pen tool to create the actual shape of this window right here. Now I'm going to right click, click make selection. I'm going to go with the point one once again. And now what I'm going to do is get my fill bucket right here. I'm going to make sure my color black is selected and check that out. And that does not look realistic at all, right? It's just like kind of pitch black. So now we learn more about the opacity and we can lower it. And now we have a realistic window tint going on. As you can see, look at that, right? So you would pretty much be able to use the opacity for multiple things. So for example, this reflection, you can't really tell because of the fact that it's just not as visible. Imagine if that reflection is really visible, right? So now what we need to do is merge this entire image. Cause if you don't, let's say I drag this on over, look what happens. It's not combined as an image, right? So what we need to do is merge all of these layers together, right? So what I would do is click on this one, hold shift on all of those, click merge layers. I'm gonna click control A to select the entire thing, control C to copy it, control V to paste it. And now what I'm gonna do is pretty much take my marquee tool once again, delete all of that and that's too much of a sharp edge so you probably want to use the eraser to kind of brush it off but now you can flip it vertical with the free transform and now this is where it becomes a little bit more interesting with the transform tool as you can see this is a little off right here so i would hold control and shift and this will allow me to skew that transform right so now i can lower the opacity and now i have a reflection i'm going to go back to my eraser tool and if it was an issue there was a reflection now we have the brand new wheels on there instead of the actual older wheels so the the reflection would not have matched, right? So now we actually have the reflection matching because we were able to merge the image and then flip it and then use the opacity for that. So the last cool thing that is a newer feature, definitely something they didn't have back in my day. We're gonna go ahead and use this tool right here. So I'm gonna create an additional image just in case. I never like to actually edit the original image. I always like to have it as a backup just in case something ever happens. So now I'm gonna click remove background and this is going to actually remove the background. Hopefully it does fairly well. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. And then we have these eyeballs right here, right? So this makes the layers either visible or not visible. So I'm going to click on it and check it out. It did an okay job. It's missing a little area right here. It actually cut a little bit too much off. So what we do is double click this right here. Right here, it gives you the brushes to be able to add the original image back on or leave it off. So as you can see, I'm going to try to add it back on. It's not doing too good because of the color of the background is white. This usually works a lot better when it comes to cutting out a picture of a person or something like that, right? So what you can do, so this where it gets a little bit more interesting you put your skills to the test what i want you guys to learn in this video is skills so obviously we have all this new ai technology all of these things but at the end of the day if you don't know the basics then at some point you're probably going to get stuck because you don't even know how to do it yourself manually to begin with it's just like hiring out an employee they're not going to know what to do if you don't know how to do it yourself because you don't even know what to teach them so let's bring back that original layer i'm gonna go ahead and do that i'm still gonna leave this one right here but what i'm gonna do is just gonna bring a piece of this original one i'm gonna copy and create a layer off of that so we have the pen tool cool i'm gonna just make this selection i'm just gonna copy it 
and paste it, all right? So now, can't really tell, but this car is selected out of the background. As you can see, I click on that, there's no background, right? So now, remember those letters we created earlier? I'm just gonna bring it behind the car, but not in front of the original image. Now I'm gonna resize it and check this out. So now what we can do is put that right behind that, just like that. Pretty interesting, right? So this should be helpful for you. It doesn't matter if you want to create posters, if you want to create t-shirt designs, it don't matter what you want to use it for. If you know and understand all of these basic tools that I just showed you, it's gonna give you a jump start and it's not gonna be as intimidating and it's going to be easier for you to start playing around with other tools. So this is episode one. We'll record a second episode in the future.